Hey, it's Jeff Quinton from the Quinton Group TV. So we'll talk about the 10 mistakes that new agents make when getting in the real estate business. Mistake number one, lack of a business plan. A business plan? What's a business plan, okay? That's what most realtors say. Well, a business plan is just a well-created, thought-out plan, right? If you have a destination to get to, for example, you're gonna travel, say, from here to, say, Philadelphia, and you didn't know how to get there, you'd plug in the destination. You need to know where, you know, you wanna start with the end in mind. I have a destination to go to Philadelphia and your GPS is going to tell you how to get there. It's going to give you instructions, turns, where to go. And that's exactly what a business plan is. And a business plan is just lack of focus and direction. That's going to help you design goals, outlines, timelines. One thing that we have here at the Quinton Group is what we call a one, three, five. You have one main goal, you have three priorities, and you have then strategies, five strategies under each one of those priorities. A very simple one-page business plan. We call it the GPS. Goals, priorities, and strategies. We outline that. That becomes your plan. That becomes your, your GPS of where you want to go. It's very important that you just go ahead and follow that, get clarity, so each day you just basically execute on your strategies, which leads to your one priority. And once you hit your priorities, that leads to your goal. So having a strong, well-thought-out, simple business plan is needed. We see too many agents make that number one mistake, not having any direction. Real estate agents getting the business, mistake number two, insufficient market knowledge. I'll tell you, this business, not easy, but it's simple. A few things you need to know when it comes to market knowledge. It's understanding the inventory. You need to know the product. I want you to understand this, that most agents today don't look at their business as a business. However, if they own, let's say, a retail store and they were gonna have a retail store and they were gonna sell shoes, a shoe store, well, you'd have shelves, in the store with shoes on them. If a customer walked through and said, okay, I'm looking for a pair of dress shoes, size nine and a half, and a loafer, that's what I want. And the salesperson wasn't able to take that customer and show them all the loafers in that size, shame on him, because they didn't know the inventory. That customer would have came in, looked around, didn't see him, and walked out. You need to learn the inventory that's gonna give you market knowledge. You need to be previewing property. Agent today, one of the biggest mistakes, not going out there to learn the inventory. By learning the inventory, that will create market knowledge immediately. What we do here at our team, especially in your first 90 days, preview 10 properties per week. You'll become an expert in the market once you do that. Common mistake number three, it's just neglecting ongoing education. You know, you gotta be an education-based agent. The market's changing all the time. The industry changing all the time. So it's very important that you should be very education-based, especially today, to learn the sales skills. I see the mistake of agents not learning and don't, don't think that the skills of the business is required when that's what it is today to be successful. That you need is required today is to have a skill-based business, okay? So ongoing education, pouring in yourself through your personal motivation, personal development, so important. Think about your education in the marketplace, your education as an agent needs to be ongoing and the level of your education it will build your confidence. If you don't have the confidence, the client, that you have, the consumer is gonna recognize that and they won't work with you. So it's important to have ongoing education as far as overall of everything, all things in the industry and work on your personal development. Mistake number four, you know, is overlooking networking opportunities, right? You should be out there networking right now as much as you can, sharing with everybody that you're a new agent, you're an agent in the business, okay? That's what clubs you belong to. Maybe it's you belong to like a country club, maybe you play pickleball, Wherever that may be, going to the gym, associate yourself around the opportunities and attend all kinds of events if you can, right? This will get you in the networking of other business owners, you know, other real estate agents. If there's a local or maybe not a local event that somebody's putting on teaching a class here at Keller Williams, here at the Quinton Group, we teach classes all the time, every day, all over the place, okay? Attending those opportunities to network, maybe build a great referral based, you know, networking with other real estate agents, maybe outside of your area, the, the markets that feed you. So think about that. Don't overlook networking opportunities. Get out there if you feel, look, if it's uncomfortable, I understand, but you need to be a little bit more uncomfortable and start introducing yourself in uncomfortable situations where the opportunities lie. Get exposure. So common mistake number five I see right now at New Agents Getting the Business, you know, it's just the inadequate marketing efforts. You know, one of the easiest things that an agent can do today is market themselves online, build online credibility right away. Here at the Creighton Group, when you come on board, 
immediately we want you to do is get online reviews. Online reviews create credibility. It's a testimonial. Uh, you don't need to have had sold a home to somebody, but you could just go to a family, friend, somebody and say, hey, it would mean the world to me. Would you give me an online review? Look, consumers today, they go online to see everything. They're going to a restaurant. They're going to review it first. They're going to a car dealership. They're going to re review it first. Why not build an amazing online review you know, system, online reviews for yourself so that you have an instant credibility right now that the consumer. Inadequate marketing efforts. Right now, I'm watching agents right now not promoting themselves socially online. It's very simple. You can use other listings that are being sold, other listings that are being listed, right? We have cooperating relationships with brokerage that we can go out and then promote other people's listings, right? You might wanna get the permission if you're gonna post it on social media, okay? However, why not? That's where the eyeballs are, right? Go market yourself as a new agent. Too many are what we call as secret agents. They hide behind everything and think that someone's gonna call them to come wanna buy and sell with them every day. Has it worked that way? Get aggressive, upgrade, step up your marketing efforts online and your reviews. It'll make it work. Okay, common mistake sellers make number six. Ignoring buyer feedback. Part of our process when you list a home with us, we're gonna give you buyer feedback. We're gonna provide that to you after each showing as long as we get it from the other agent. They're gonna tell us about that they like the condition, that they like the price, what they felt about the price, what they felt about the overall property in general in the showing. And there's many times it's that the buyers will give you this feedback. The buyer's agents will give you this feedback. You know, on a scale of one to five, it was a two. They felt the property wasn't in its best condition, okay? What do you feel about the price? Well, we thought it was overpriced, okay? Let this be an opportunity to take that feedback, you know, giving you good insight of what's going on to make some adjustments. And maybe this condition isn't good. Maybe it needs a lot of work. Maybe we need to put a couple bucks into certain things. Let's find out a little more detail what was going on. Let's not ignore that and say, oh, well, we'll find the right buyer, right? This isn't the right buyer for you. May or may not be. I get it. But if they continue to give this feedback over and over, they're telling you something, giving you insight about the property. Let's use this relevant information to go ahead and make some adjustments to get your top dollar. Let's not make that mistake. In our series of the top 10 sellers' uh, mistakes when marketing and selling the property, this is number seven. Poor marketing and exposure. So many times I see sellers out there hire a broker or an agent, maybe they're selling on their own, and they're simply just not getting the marketing or the exposure in the market to the right amount of buyers. We gotta make sure that all the marketing efforts are put out to get the right amount of exposure to the right buyer, not only online, but also locally even inside the real estate community. Very, very important that you're getting the exposure to the right buyers. Now, the number one marketing piece that you can ever do, number one, here's the secret, it's price. Remember, you can go market the property everywhere, but until it's priced right, that's your number one piece of marketing. That's going to attract the agents and the buyers to come get excited about your property. However, we have to make sure that the property also is getting the right marketing with the right professional photography, the right online marketing, everything about it, the comments, the remarks in the MLS, it's positioned the right way. Make sure all that's happening so you don't avoid this mistake by not getting an exposed to the right people. Mistake number eight. So mistake number eight, qualifying leads, right? If you get a lead, with, <laughs> we see too many agents that are spending too much time with unqualified leads. There's Okay, so for example, they get a lead. Hey, I see a house at 123 Banana Street. Can I look at it? Yep, I'll be right there. They run out, go show. They find out that the buyer at the property, it's way out of the price range. They just love the way they look. It's been, they, they always wanted to be inside this house. Unqualified appointment, they're never gonna buy that house. They're not even can afford that house. Once they find it, start asking pre-qualifying questions, they weren't even looking to buy. They just want to see the inside of the house. Don't waste your time. You've got to understand how to pre-qualify your appointments, buyers and sellers, pre-qualifying them for motivation and see if they're real, if they're really ready to make ready to make a decision. So wasting time on unqualified people, okay? That's one mistake. The mistake is though, it's your time, right? We're not paid by the hour. So the time you're being spent unqualified you know, prospects, you could go ahead and spend that other time finding one who's qualified. That is a huge mistake. So make sure that you understand the pre-qualifying process, what questions to ask, and then making the decision, am I gonna spend my time with that person? Mistake number nine, overextending financially in a bunch of different ways. You know, we say new agents getting the market today that you need to have a minimum, if not six to nine months of savings set aside in a savings account that you can't touch to maintain your lifestyle, maintain your bills. So you're not in a, always in a frantic moment, desperation, needing a commission check. It's gonna take you typically six to nine months to start earning and 
getting in momentum. Our business right now typically is a 90 day process. Your first 90 days is a 90 day cycle of what you do will pay off the following 90 days. So that right there is six months. Understand to have enough financial ability, money saved, so you're not feeling desperate or having to go out and get a second job, third job, bartend job, deliver pizza, whatever it may be. Full time, you jump in right away without any other distractions so you could go ahead and make a commitment to it financially, right? Important. Another important thing right now, I see agents, they get in the business, they've got a couple bucks and they start spending money on marketing that doesn't produce any income, that doesn't produce any leads, that doesn't produce any results, right? They see some gimmick that's out there, next gimmick that comes along, they buy it. And the next one, they buy it. They're so attracted to the marketing of things, they overspend on things that aren't predictable, right? That aren't proven and they waste a lot of money over and over and over. So spending foolish money on marketing that doesn't work and then also not having the ability to sustain six to nine months to get the momentum. Let's not make that mistake. The number 10 most common mistake we see with agents today, new agents especially, fear of asking for help. Fear of asking for help, fear of ha- asking for mentorship, coaching, whatever it may be. Ego, the ego of the agent today gets in the way. They know it all. I know it all, I can do it, I don't need your help. Why do I need your help? I'm embarrassed I've asked for help. As a new agent today, you need to ask for help over and over and over. You're gonna make mistakes, but why not learn from somebody else who's already made the mistakes so they can give you the guidance so that you don't make it again, right? Ask for help, what do I do? Okay, so a buyer right now wants to put in an offer. What do I do? There's multiple offers on property, right? There's three offers already in. How do I win this? How do I structure the buyer to get the deal, right? What's the next steps? I have a listing appointment need to go on. What do I bring? What do I say? How do I figure out the right price for this property to price it properly? All these things. Ask for some help. I see too many agents today, new agents. Maybe they just don't know to ask. I don't know. But one thing that's very important and is what we say is being coachable. The ability to follow, right? Guidance, the ability to ask for help and then be able to take that help or that advice and then go execute. How coachable are you? The most coachable agents today are the ones a lot of times most successful. They ask for help, they get themselves out of the way. So let's not then make that mistake. So ask for help at any time or gain some mentorship. It'll accelerate your learning curve immediately.